made my weekend. Hi, everybody. Did anyone watch, watch the uh, going live first, first episode last night? Yeah. So, oh, you just did crap. it? They're just doing stuff. Oh, crap. That would have been dangerous. Did, wait, are you recording the director's commentary for... Are you recording commentary for Doug now? I can't, I can no, well, I can't you confirm or deny. You live with him having a weird yeah. conversation, but this time I went live with him going, having like six conversations. Wait, did, anyone, did anyone watch the first episode of the, the new uh, Game of Thrones show last night? Of course! Uh, yes, yes, well, we really, yeah, we really yeah. cannot talk about it on stream. I have thoughts. No. Um, I, and I also have not seen it yet, so I don't want any spoilers because I'm going to oh. probably watch it tomorrow. I'm sorry, retract. Uh, so of wait, course, did, some of us have. Dan, did you watch, did you just ask that question to then not have the conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you literally went, has anyone watched it? Great, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> no, I've seen it, I've Shut seen up. it. I just, I just wanted to know, I want to know if we'd all watch this that way as soon, as soon as we, as we're not live anymore, as soon as we've closed the stream and gone into the nether pocket dimension in which we exist, when we are not performing live on the internet, wow. then we, but That's, you still haven't. I really it. think Dan just and don't want to talk to him about but, how he views like having an online like public persona versus. That's really interesting. I am nothing without the attention. And yet, and yet, I, you crave you, you crave a pocket dimension where you can speak freely. That's interesting. I am a man of opposites. There you go, a man of opposites. Well, on that note, welcome everyone to a civilized age. Oh, it's just civilized age. There's no A. There's no indefinite article. Whew. This really should feels there, like the there old days of uh, Top Flight right now. This this opening. This <laughs> really feel. This feels like some off the off the cuff. This is what Mondays are meant to be like. Apparently, uh, Millie and Kevin. I apologize for this. Things are usually way slicker on other evenings. Uh, my fine. name's Philip. I'm the cosmic force for this game. The cosmic force, but isn't. Isn't the game master of the system called the Living Force? Wait, the game master of the system's called the Living Force? What is this system anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, last <laughs> night, we did a quick talk through of how this system works, uh, just for people to sort of understand the rules of uh, this uh, sort of custom D100 Star Wars system that we put together, uh, drawing mainly as inspiration uh, the um, Chaosium basic role-playing uh, sort of like generic uh, role-playing system and specifically drawing a lot from Call of Cthulhu as well. Um, so uh, just real quick, I will explain how this game works before we actually jump into the playing. Um, and throughout the game, I'll try to kind of give one degree or another of explanation of how this system works. Because I know, though we've now done a couple of games on this, and on Fridays we're often even doing Call of Cthulhu uh, for our Blood from a Stone horror game, not everybody's super familiar with the roll under D100 system. So let's do it. Um, in this game, our characters have a bunch of scores for their talents. There are so many talents. It's a massive spreadsheet full of all the different talents they have. Uh, and um, for whatever their score is, the higher it is, the easier it is for them to accomplish that task. Because in order to uh, do a talent roll, you roll a D100. And for those of you who don't know, which genuinely might be plenty of people, uh, a D100, yeah, hold it, hold them up if you got them. D100 is, is kind of two dice in one. Um, one represents the tens column, one represents the ones column. Uh, if you roll a zero on this one, it's, your, it's basically going to be like one through nine, unless you roll a zero on all of them, and then it is a 100. Um, unless you're playing a system that doesn't have, I'm, yeah, there you go, 100, okay. Uh, unless you're playing a system that doesn't have 100, uh, and there are a few like that, in which case it's zero, but in any event, um, so the way the game works, uh, you roll this, and provided you can roll under your score, you have achieved a normal degree of success. Um, so therefore you want to have as high a score as possible. You actually can have a score even over 100, which means a normal success is kind of guaranteed for you. But to make the game interesting, they uh, have different degrees of success. So if you can roll under half of your score, that's called a hard success. Under a fifth is an extreme success. And if you can roll under a 20th of your score, which is going to be very small numbers indeed, uh, that is considered a vital success. And so that's kind of a way for even if you have characters who are really good at things to kind of keep there some drama, some chance um, of failure, even at sort of high levels, if, if the task they're trying to do is really hard. Also, when you're comparing degrees of success against like enemies, that's kind of how that works. So uh, so yeah, so it's a very kind of... Uh, I, I, I'll, I feel many of the players have said this. Uh, 
Millie, you're you're the newest to it. Is it? It kind of is intuitive once you start doing it, right? It's kind of or not or yeah, not. Sorry, maybe. I had to unmute myself. It no, just took it took me a sec. I re I had to reach for it. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it definitely is way more intuitive than I was overwhelmed by a spreadsheet at first. Then I took my plethora of color coded notes, and <laughs> not really kind of see, but kind of see because I'm a nerd. And uh, yeah, I learned it. But it really didn't need all the color coded notes. It just helped. <laughs> no, but it's good to it's good to intuitive. It, I've I've. Yeah, so it's definitely intuitive. It definitely helps. Yeah, and I think in some ways I would say that the D100 system, like, like, and I've, I've found this, you know, playing uh, playing Call of Cthulhu with people, in some ways there are things about it that are, are a little quicker and faster for people to pick up than even, like, 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. You could say it's a more elegant system for a more civilized age. Hey, now. Um, <laughs> but it's also a down-and-dirty system for when you're in a more wretched hive. Uh the point of all of these things is uh, that, uh, so in this system, basically, you're going to hear our players making a lot of D100 rolls, and you might hear them talking about degrees of success. So the lower they roll, the more success they achieve, because it's it's going to be a smaller percentage of whatever their score is. In addition, they have some means of manipulating uh, their numbers, because that's a thing I like to do, uh, some kind of like like not unlimited resources. They have force points. They can use those for re-rolls. Um, and some of our more force powered people can actually use them to do force things. Um, and then uh, our, uh, you can also spend your luck. There's a luck score, which is kind of my favorite thing about all of Call of Cthulhu. You, they, when in doubt, just have them make a luck roll to see if it is there or not. Um, so you can actually spend your luck, which makes your score lower. So it's harder for you to succeed at luck rolls, but you can use that to subtract a number from a roll you've made, potentially turning something into whatever degree of success you are trying to turn it into. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the, the real basics of the system. Um, and since this is kind of like a, like a homebrew, you know, combination of, of one, uh, we're still sort of like, you know, fine tuning it. And you might, you might occasionally hear me make alterations. There actually is at, at some point, I don't know if I will do it based on factors. The next time we have a combat, I may try something. I may try a thing a little bit different. I had, I had an idea about how combats could work. Um, but I might not do it if it's, like, a real complicated, but, like, for a certain kind of combat, I might try something else just to mix things up. So, point being, um, that's the system we're running. But what is this game we're playing? It's a Star Wars game, apparently, hence shirts and backgrounds. Um, our game is called Civilized Age. It takes place hundreds of years after the, uh, original trilogy and, well, after any of the trilogies, actually. Um, and, uh, in this game so far, uh, we have met, um, Train Sadie Tell, his trusty droid Bozetto, um, his courtesy driver uh, Selena Marnus, who just works at the, uh, literally just drove the guy and then got again, invited in for, for, for just hanging out at his ex-wife's house. Um, that's mm -hmm. Abriel Sadie Tell. Um, and we also have Narnapond Marm, a, uh, Narnapond Marm, a, uh, a very sort of uh, influential advisor in the court of the Vicountess uh, here on the planet of Alsaken, which is kind of like one of the prince worlds in this time, a real sort of like seat of power and influence. Um, Train came home to see his kids. He brought them a cool present crafted this by... This was not his home. He did not come to his home. He came... He came home is to where, where my, his home children... Home is wherever my children are. Not necessarily the same play, the same physical building, but I just would like to clarify. Understood. So he came to a home that is not his uh, to see his children, to bring them a gift crafted by his uh, employer, a, a mysterious artist named Spherifex. Upon giving this item to his children, they seem to disappear in a burst of eerie blue light. Um, now, Train, Abriel, Bozetto, Selena... And uh, also Narnapond Marm, who was brought in by Abriel's current boyfriend, uh, the Baronet Elbrand. Uh, such a good guy. He is so such a good He's guy. so nice. He's really yeah. cool. He is. sucks yeah. so much. He also, like, have you ever heard him sing? He's got a really nice voice. Um, anyway, he... Uh, uh, he's... What extra layer? Yeah, just, just extra geez. layer um, on top of it. In any case, uh, yeah, so the... There uh, you go. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I lost one, everybody. Um, so, um, yes, so as, uh, as our group um, found these children missing, uh, Narnapan Marv was brought in to maybe provide some guidance. Our, our friends uh, made some calls, did some research, and decided to go to Train's employer, who was in the shards of the Hosnian system, um, where he was maybe creating more of these strange spheres. They went, largely because they heard signs of struggle over communication. Upon arriving there, arriving, hold on, arriving at the music of the spheres, aboard the du the Count's Vigor, I was going to say, the, 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 the Duke's Vigor, but it's the, the Count's Vigor, uh, they found a strange ship in the hangar next to their own. In any event, the group then uh, found a droid waiting for them, asked sort of what was going on. They <laughs> they took the uh, <laughs> they took they took a direct approach when Selena pulled out a uh, an antique blaster, uh, which is not really common in this civilized age. Most everyone, even non force users, wield some kind of uh, saber, whether it's a lightsaber or a glow saber. Um, Selena pulled out an antique blaster, blew the door uh, locks apart. Um, the group then rushed through where they found signs of a struggle and uh, an Iktochi in kind of like ragged, uh, strange like robes um, who looked pretty bad himself, like like attacking um, a massive uh, Chukthai who was in fact the Sphere FX as Train Sadie Tell had kind of suspected. Um, the group engaged this person, uh, attempted to knock him out. He summoned various illusions. Other illusions were also summoned. Also, the old man, Nardapon Marm, uh, appeared next to Selena as she was she was just hacking away with her saber. Nardapon appeared next to her and pulled out a witch saber uh, and appeared in a burst of green flame, so that's not a thing. And listen, guys, this recap is not including various things that Selena and Nardapon have experienced because the whole group doesn't know those, and we'll just let them share those materials if and when they choose. Uh, but no one was able to sort of land a hit on this guy, despite some very good strategic, uh, guidance from, uh, Abriel until Bozzetto hit him with a, uh, just like a little, like, electroshock prod, which actually did stun him, because for the record, uh, my Iktochi friend was not looking good when you guys showed up, on account of he fought a Triceratops. <laughs> so... With all of that in mind, um, we sort of uh, we sort of found that that uh, train went to the Spherefex, asked what was happening, sort of like explained that his children disappeared. The Spherefex, with his dying breath, told that told train that his children are on Exo, a planet beyond the uh, beyond the living, beyond the cosmic, and then he died. Meanwhile, we might have seen a scene somewhere of some kids on a... I don't want to talk about what we saw. The point is, that was that was the end of your story. Um, you also... I guess I didn't mention in this thing that you, you are now believing that there is some connection between the Sphere FX's artwork and hyperspace itself. Which is an odd possibility. But we now return to you all. Um, sort of, I think, Train, you're the only person who's any worse for wear as you were stabbed by this crazy Iktochi who has these two real, like, just, like, mean, kind of, like, slightly curved, like, black metal, like, rusted-looking blades. Um, you were cut by one of those. The rest of you sort of have emerged without any, like, any serious damage. Um, he has been tied up by Abriel, um, who just kind of did a loose, you know, kind of, like, wrap him in some stuff and pull it together, so he's not expertly tied, you don't think, but he's 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 unconscious and tied up for now. The Sphere FX has just died. That is where we come to you all here in the sort of beautiful, like massive viewing sculpture chamber where the Sphere Effects did his work before his death aboard his vessel, the music of the spheres, amidst the ruins of the Hosnian system. Uh, I'll roll over to you, 
train and seeing your injuries just boop, 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 and I'll pop out a buzzsaw and sort of indicate your wounded no. appendage. Boop, 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 boop. No. Listen, it's not, it's not that bad. But thank you for the offer. Um, I, I was like, I was looking at everyone's one. He's, he's gone. Um, you're not looking too good yourself. I'm fine. For now, I'm fine for now. And sorry, previously he had told us what. I think he actually did. Like, like the last thing that happened is he said it aloud to all of you, and then I yeah. had, and I cut. In my time, have I with the Bractal Knight? Have I heard of any other kinds of worlds that mm. might? sounds like the same type of place that he's talking about um a planet called exo yeah um, you or... know you you've certainly heard of a planet called exegol um mm -hmm. go ahead and roll a uh try a history i guess okay um this is a pretty this is a pretty improbable one but give it a shot uh ah uh, that's a 20 which is a hard success hard success you have not heard of exo Okay. Um, it seems to be, it doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell at all. I'll phrase it like that. But okay, but it, the way he described it, because I remember him saying he he did tell us that it it was like between the living and the dead. Have I heard of any any myths or anything? He said it was. About he, like that? Uh, sure. Make a lore roll. That's fine. Uh, I'm gonna have Bizzetto, I'm gonna say, Bizzetto, can you go jack into the terminal and see if there's anything in his records or anything files that might have any clues. <laughs> Pop up my scomp. I'll go plug it in. Understood. Um, Bazzetto, you begin to sort of look through a, a thing that is making this hard is that everything is in Chukthis, a very sort of strange language with mm -hmm. these like weirdly sort of fashioned glyphs. Um, go ahead and make a computer, uh, use computer roll. Um, let's just see what kind of like general, uh, uh, make a use computer roll. Well, while he's doing that, can I search the body of the Itoki, Itchitoki? Um, you definitely can. I will tell you that he is not, like, out-out, so doing so will probably awaken him. Got he's, it. He's, like, he's, like, he's not, like, stirring that you're you're worried he's about to wake up, but he's definitely, like, like, he's, like, uh, he's like you know, gro groaning a bit here or there, so you're definitely welcome to. He is tied up, and you have him surrounded, but uh, you, uh, no, no role required to spot that. You think you think going through his stuff could very likely cause him to to awaken. Oh, that's been a force point to reroll. Okay. Well, okay. Same same result basically. Uh, just a regular success. Regular success. You um you are unable to like just like kind of run like a standard translating thing. Um, nevertheless, you search the various terms that are are used, and you don't really see anything. You're not seeing you're not seeing like like oh cool like. Hidden planet coordinates, perfect. You're, you're not seeing any sort of stuff like that. Um, Narnaponder, are you going through the guy's stuff? No, I'll wait. I'll tell you what, make a luck roll. All right. That is a fail. A fail, yeah. Unfortunately for you, Narnaponder, and everyone by extension, when the guy fell, he kind of fell, like, with both of his knives sort of, like, under him. So, you, you know, you could try to fish one out, but... You might awaken the the Iktochi. Um, are there any are there any pieces of work in this? This is a like it was the workshop, right? This was his. Uh, yes, this was his studio. This is where he built. Is there is there a work? Is there a piece that is current that seems to be currently in the process of that he was working on? Make a luck roll. God, it's such a good it's such a good kind of roll to have people make. Because I don't have to decide. The dice tell. Uh, that's a fifteen with a hard success. With a hard success, there is a piece in process. Um, you see that it seems like he does some kind of um, like he he seems to uh, build most of the sphere and then put stuff into it and then do various things. And um, uh, when it 
they use kind of some of those like 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 matter manipulators to make it a pure sphere at the end. So like he kind of drops stuff into two thirds of a sphere, then they put another piece of. So you you basically see two separated pieces, and you see like a glass like joiner piece basically that you can run around the edge to make the the glass seamless. Okay, so then if they're with this, I'm looking at this thing. Is it seem like there are any? Does it seem like any kind of might have any overlay? possibility for like a stellar map or like hyperspace lanes or anything like that make a uh navigation interstellar for me roll cool i'm very good at this yeah um but this is just a i'll i'll, I'll even this is well yeah just roll it <laughs> 69 put it in that chat it up that's fine you can there's an emote there's an emote for that um that's you, a failure uh you don't see anything that is related to like a star map or anything in what he's working on you do however notice that there do seem to be some like hyperdrive field generators in this room that are like like you you recognize those from just being on ships but you see a couple of them that like rather than like having the usual thing they then have these like long like tapering conical uh arms sticking off the edge of them Based on the way they're shaped, I mean, that, wait, so does that shape seem normal, or it seems like they've been modified for this? You've never seen anything like this. You you know that what they're attached to is this, but this arm that comes off of it, you're very unfamiliar with. Can I try and start figuring out what that arm does somehow? Sure, make a uh, make a science, general science rule. Um, Selena, Abriel, anything you guys are up to? I was just standing over... Um, the guy, like, just making sure that, like, he doesn't move, like, there's nothing that he can do. <laughs> you're right, you're on guard duty for the, uh, not yeah, at all, figured... not at all threatening, uh, Iktochi, sure. Yeah, just figure to make sure he stays tied up. We should really kill this one. These kinds are dangerous. Oh, he might have information. That's a 96. What's your, what's your score in it? 25. Cool. Um, I'm going to say that you, um, I'm going to say the fumble here is, 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 is certainly is one of understanding, uh, is one of like understanding the science, but it also will kind of be a bit of a, like, like you're looking with your hands a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so you kind of hit bump something on this generator um, and it triggers a beam of energy to fire out of it into that large glass sphere. Um, you are not like, you're not, I mean, whatever happened with this is insane. Like you can't just like shoot a hyperdrive beam at somebody. You have to like make a field and like it's, it's a thing. So instead it's just a release of energy. The sphere explodes in a sort of shards of glass. Can everyone please make a dodge roll? Oh. Okay. Oh, I'm doing great. Oh. Which one is dodge? 35, which is uh, the hardest. under combat. combat. Sorry, not physical. Right. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. I just wanted to double check. Got an extreme. Nice. Hard success. Okay. I got a 75, a regular success. Regular success. Regular success as well. Regular success. I will say this was this was not meant to be a... This is just a fumble disaster, so any information you might have gleaned has just been destroyed, and a dangerous thing happened. I do have to roll one other thing, though, with uh, three penalties, let's say. Um... Wait. If I have... If I have a penalty to this... Mm -hmm. I'm bruised. I have a penalty to this, right? Ooh, yes, you do. You actually have uh, one penalty to any roll you make. Okay, that was a lower roll, so yeah. Cool. Um, all right. So, um... I forgot I have a bonus to dodge, or a, a like, a bonus, so I actually got a five. Ooh. So, yeah, basically, so, Selena, again, got... with this kind of... Yeah. And that is one that is as heightened by your, your facet, right? That is, like, has different yeah. color. Yeah, that's so, why yeah. I was like, wait, I feel like I could do something here. And Selena like, kind of, uh, as, as Selena's standing there, Narapon, you do notice Selena like like move even before you do kind of just like like kind of like has started to jump before the thing exploded and kind of just like twists her body and just lands sort of like bef like before it even registers it's it's almost like jump oh my god something exploded kind of that that vibe it's a it's that sort of you know like 
super intuitive thing. So you definitely can tell she's got some skills. Uh, no one, even Bozzetto, even with only a normal, you don't take any damage. There might be a couple of pieces of glass sticking out of the maquettes attached to you, but it's no, no huge deal. Um, your friend on the ground um, howls in pain uh, as some of like shards of glass have impacted him and his eyes open. And he just kind of like, Oh, Carefina. <sighs> Can I draw my glow saber and point it at him? And by the way, I never asked you this. What color is your glow saber? <gasps> I get to pick? Yeah. It's nowhere I... near as intense a color, but what color is it? Can it be like, it's not an intense color? It will, it will be a pale, they... it'll be, there. that glow sabers are very pale compared to lightsabers. But can they mean does it have to mean something glow sabers don't have like magical kyber crystals in them they're just like <laughs> someone's just that teal yeah okay yeah, yeah you this kind of teal glow goes over I'm also yeah switching them on i will put my like my boot on his chest oh lightly not just to keep him there just for fun yeah Am I tied up? Have you t have you really tied me up? Yeah. Um. He, Obviously. He, he looks at you and says, You're not. Actually, he is going to roll a, uh, uh this is not a combat thing. He's making a roll, uh, just kind of a, a thinking of you. He does have two penalties right now. Uh, yeah. Can I also actively be looking for any new illusions from him? Absolutely. You see no illusions from him, but basically you see him like reaching out with the force and kind of like washing over Selena and just being like, you're not. Huh. You don't, you don't know, I'm, a, I'm not trying to say you don't know who I am, but you don't know what I am. Is that, except for, what about you, witch knight? I saw there was a witch knight among you. You know what he really looks like? Just look around. <laughs> We're not ones really concerned with looks right now. I, I mean, looks is real important. He's got he's got an illusion up. I see through it, of course. But well, there's no illusion that you don't look so great right now. Ah, I don't I don't feel so great right now. I'm, that's that's a right. Oh, that's a right true situation. I I'm, step harder <clears throat> on his chest. What do you know about me then? You. I'm not totally certain about you. The, the the one who looks like an old man to you all, that's the witch knight. I know that. None of the rest of you got the force upon you. But you, you're not a royal guardian. You don't fight like a Skywalker. As he says this, Selena, make a willpower roll. Um, it's a 51. Fifty-nine. That is a normal success. What degree of success? Yes. Uh, willpower is... That is a regular success. Regular success. My willpower is 60. So I a... just made it. Oh, wow. You just made it. Okay, so... I just with made a, it. With a barely skating by regular success, um, you for a moment, you just hear this like voice thundering in your mind, just like, you will kill. And you're... You just like force out of it. This is a word you have heard periodically since then, but the way he sort of said it uh, was surprising. Um, uh, but he's kind of now just staring up at you with this um, uh, this strange kind of like uncertainty. Uh, he's kind of like, almost like muttering to himself, you're not a dark bin, do you? You don't seem you're not using a nooksie, so I don't think you're a sorrow keeper. Let's just say I'm not from around here. 
Ah. Well, welcome. I'm not from around here either. I am a former member of an order called the Sorcerers of Tund. Ever heard of us? Have we? Uh, you can make a lore oh. roll on Sorcerers of Tuned. That's fine. Uh, oh, can I? Abriel, you could do lore or history if you'd rather. Okay. I will do history. Selena, nope. don't even bother. Uh, no, I wasn't going to. <laughs> I just, I'm just going to stare down at him yeah. and just, like, do that thing where my boot just kind of shifts, uh, like, on his chest a little bit. In res- with my so weight. I'm, I want you to actually make for me a feel that feel? will be under your senses, under all the physicals, right. go to your senses. Just make a little feel roll for me. Feel or touch? So sorry, touch? a touch roll. Yeah, I was like, ooh, what is that? Okay. <laughs> we play these games to get away from our feelings, Philip. Don't stop <laughs> making me feel things. Got a 29, ooh. which is, which is my, that's a, it's a fail, but my, right, my touch is a 20, so it's close. Once again, once again, on the cusp. You want to re-roll that? You want to use force point or luck points or anything? Or you'll you'll let that be an uncertainty? I'll just let that be an uncertainty. Wonderful. More um, fun that way. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, as you kind of, like, dig your boot kind of into his chest, he kind of, like, you know, just sort of is just grunting up at all of you. Uh, what was that? Uh, so it seems like, did Abriel and Train, you guys made rolls? I failed. I failed as well, yeah. So yeah, no, none of you have heard of the Sorcerers of Tuned. What is it normal for them to have former members? You make a lore roll yourself. It's not so hard a lore roll for you, but this is a more obscure matter. So go ahead, just let's see what you got. Oh, and actually, tuned? wait. Now you, this is interesting, good sir. You know about their deceptions, but you don't. Hmm, I'll tell you what. It's a lore general, but give yourself a free bonus on it. Alrighty. So it's still only your general target, but yeah, you get it. Um, well, two of the same. I'll do a force point to re roll. Um, so if there's a bonus and one is a 70 and one is a 100, do I still get to do the 70? You still get to do the 70, yes. And actually, that's a great thing that ha- almost never comes up. But just so you're aware, a bonus will never cause you to have a, um, a uh, what's it called? A, a, a fumble. Fumble. Like, like yeah. if, you, if, uh, if you roll, if they're both 100s, then yes, that's somehow a fumble. But if you have a bonus and the, and the, the, the lower, the 0-0... Zero, zero, it's with a zero, it would be a fumble. However, flip side to that, penalties cannot prevent a fumble. Got it. It's a fail. A fail. Understood. So you are unsure about the idea of them having former members. He's just kind of looking up at all of you like, what happened to your funny little hat? <laughs> I did lost it. I, I, I will confess. I do miss me hat. Did they kick you out for not having a hat? Kick me out? No, I left. Disagree. My children. Excuse me. I, I'm no. I'm not sorry. My children are missing, and you're asking about a cripping hat. I mean, they're pretty funny when you when you see them. Oh, I, oi, they're not funny. They're very nice looking hats. Okay, you shut up about your hat. Do you know anything about two missing children? I'm. I'm over the years, I've made a lot of children go missing. Recently. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get information from... About what? Yon individual. About how they're bleeding doing it. The spheres... 
Say it. How the do you spare say it? effects. Spare effects. About the spare effects. I, I think. I mean, it was clear he knew some part of it. Well, sorry to tell you, but they're all broken. Do you have any information as to how they work, or do you not know anything about them? I'm not, I mean, oh Lord, I suppose I am at your mercy. I'll tell you what, why don't you let me stand up? And I'll, uh, I'll sort of answer the question for that. Why do you need fake. to stand up? You can speak just fine from there. Uh, I'm going to slap him in the face of the blade of my glow saber. Well, not hard, just like a little like zing to be like, no, you're staying right. right there. You slap him in the face with the glow saber. He kind of. Which night? You seem to know of my former ilk. You know of our illusory powers. But you know what else it is we can do? Don't you? Do I? Go ahead and make a... Go ahead and make a... You can do, even do the deceptions of them, that's fine. Uh, that is a hard success. The way he's sort of suggesting this, the way he's kind of hinting at something, some witch knights who have faced these, you, you have never experienced this personally, claim that beyond mere illusions, this, the, the, the sorcerers of Tuned, it may just be a more sophisticated illusion, but it seems like on occasion they are capable of, of actually, like, becoming other things. They can, sh they can maybe, some people consider them shapeshifters. I think most witch knights consider them, um, that it's all just like, it's like better illusions. But you've certainly heard rumors of the idea that the Sorcerers of Tunes are considered shapeshifters. A lot of, I'll, I'll leave it to you if you put that down to there's any possibility, but you know that it's a, it's a theory. Stop skirting the question and answer. I don't care much about the spheres other than how they work. And I asked you, do you know anything about how they work, or are you just completely ignorant here, looking for information? I mean, but more or less that latter one, yeah. Okay, then we don't need you. <laughs> I'll draw my sword back. I my mean, saber back. I understand why. I just, um... Oh. I think you may already be... Oh! Selena, your boot <laughs> squelches through to the ground. As he goes, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, she stepped through me. Uh. Oops. I'll look at Narnapon. I did look for illusions again. Go ahead. Uh, oh, gross. Look for an illusion there. I just start shaking it off my boot. You uh, regular raise, success. Regular success. You see no illusion. You raise your boot out of his chest, and there's nothing on your shoe. That doesn't seem right. It, it, that... it, it's not right, you know, on account of how his neck starts to, like, lengthen. And like his oh. like arms and legs begin to like lengthen and like like slither together almost. Just um, you should just kill him now. It's very not right. I'm uh, I'm. <laughs> you could have just let me stand up and been polite about it. He kind of his face like splits into a thousand different little tendrils that start like thrashing around. And um, you see, uh, actually, could in, is anyone here have a seventy-seven or higher um, in either like sciences general or miscellany or any kind of uh, anything related to like the natural world? The other campaign, we'd have multiple people, but this one, this is not yeah. really an expertise thing. Then I will simply say that that kind of like all of these like tendrils and things begin to compact into a um, a rather small, maybe like half to quarter meter. Uh, sized, like, like squid-like creature. Uh, 
I'll just I'll try and hit him. Make your attack. That's a hard success. A hard success. All right. Good to know. Um, he is actually trying to do a run instead of a hard success. So as Train kind of like just moves forward, the rest of you like eh, overcome largely because no one said anything. Eh. Um, uh, can I try to block the exit? Uh, you can move for an exit. I'll say, I'll tell you what. You begin to move to block an exit until you see that he's trying to like go down in between like some like like a grating in the in the he's trying to like compress his body through like a hole um you also notice his clothing and his knives seem to be like subsumed into him when he did this um but Narnapon, as you sort of move train you strike true um because he was not swift enough i think he was probably still trained so uh what is the damage of your glow saber a low zero a low so zero so you do two degrees of damage um did just start a new game, so his force points also kind of reset. Um, I guess I do get to roll for his natural armor right now, which is 10, but might as well try it. Ha-ha! No! A 7! Damn it. Can't focus, but it's a 7. So that reduces it down to 1, so he spends 1 force point to avoid being killed. But he is now, like, trying to, like, slither down through a grate as the rest of you, like, realize what's going on. So if you want to begin a sort of a, 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 a combat sequence type thing, uh, just know that oftentimes running, like, since he's halfway there, like, you can all take a swing at him, but if he can achieve any degree of, of success, he'll get away. Because he's already yeah. I just wanted to, to shoot at him with my blaster. Understood. Like, take no, just just take a shot. Start shooting. Take a shot. See what happens. Um, he does. Have... Pasetta, can you lock down the ship's hangar from here? Oh, I get a bonus. I get a bonus. So okay, as you run over to do the use computer, the rest of you just like you oh, know with your I blades, not... kind of harder. I just assumed I have not. I'm take, taking oh, forever yeah. to sort through all this. Chuck fees. Can I? So I'm, I'm still spend... connected. Go for it. Sorry. Can I spend a force point to reroll? You c always. Okay. Unless you roll a fumble, then you cannot. But otherwise, you're always allowed to. Oh, yeah. What's a fumble? A fumble is... Uh, Which one is the fumble so that I would know? Fumble okay. is uh, fumble is 100 unless your score is, fifth, is is 49 or lower, and then it's 96 to 100. But for blaster, yeah, you're well Yeah, no, I got a 100. You rolled a 100. <laughs> oh, shit. Perfection. <laughs> So, Selena, no. as you try to shoot, the blaster so like, ricochets oh, okay, off the ground into Bozetto. Um, <gasps> Bozetto, uh, go ahead and make an armor roll for me. I'm so sorry. What do you have I'm against just... droids? Nothing! Blasters. I love droids! Nothing! 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 Extreme success. So we will say that you, um, you, uh, you are blasted by the thing. You take no damage from it. Uh, you can kind of maybe you just like spin around a couple <laughs> times, uh, but um, and you can you can still uh, you can then kind of plug back in and try to do the thing. It wasn't your fumble, so your scomp didn't break or anything. Uh, but he has now he is now out of this room. So go ahead and what was your uh, use computers? Uh, it's a uh, hard success wonderful with a hard success you have locked down the hangar bay um sarah could i identify the type of vent that he went down into oh sure um make a um, great yeah, like schematics. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, you can pitch me something. I would kind of say that's like a miscellany in my mind. Would it be like, would it be like any of the vehicle talents? Like just Ooh, my knowledge? Yeah, of... tell you what, do a, oh, I've got it. Do a capital ship roll. <laughs> oh, wait, are you terrible at that? <laughs> you are terrible. Never mind, just kidding. That's, that really is, like, this is more a capital ship than, like, a freighter. Sure, sure. Um, okay, no, no, that's not, that's not. Uh, do a, uh... I'll do a miscellaneous, that's fine. Uh, do a general sciences. Ship, ship layout okay. is a part of the design. That's fine, yeah. Okay. General sciences. Um, that's a failure. Failure. Yeah. 
unfortunate, but bum, bum. such things happen. Uh, so you, um, but you, so you're not sure what he escaped into. Um, Narnapond, I will say that based on the role you made earlier and just witnessing this, you don't think that was an illusion. You think that this guy, like, <laughs> squelched his body into some weird creature and climbed down through a grate and left this chamber. Those, hate those guys. <laughs> I run for the hangar. Understood. Um, what are the rest of you doing? If Narnapons, yeah, I'll run that way too. See I will as well. Before he gets to a ship. Wonderful. Yeah, I will run, but then on the way I'll check on Bozzetto. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'll just pat Bozzetto. I'll just be like, I'm sorry. Didn't lose you me. put a hand on the droid, Selena. Oh. And this, this sense comes over you again. Make another willpower roll. Oh gosh, I was like, of course I touched the droid. But to kill me? I didn't mean to kill you. It was an accident. Um, that is a twenty. So that is a hard success. Hard success. Um, so I'm gonna say, in this point, rather than being sort of like so like overwhelmed by what you are seeing, there's this there's this moment as you like put a hand like on the droid and like like you'd been sensing this already but like whatever familiarity you found was entirely to this droid mm -hmm. and something about the way it turned its head something about the way it moved was just familiar it feels like failure it feels like a mistake it feels like something that you figured out too late you remember you remember running through these grated tunnels beneath the palace and realizing he put it in the droid. It's in the droid. I have to get on that skiff. It's inside the droid. He's not unarmed. He can, he ha that's, that's what his trick is. And you couldn't get there in time. And then that hut, the hut again, as you beg and plead something you would never do, telling you no. You remember seeing a little droid, silver and blue, a projection, your target, a blue hologram. As a gift, I present these two droids. I hope they serve you well. Droids can live a long time. You've seen this droid before. I pat him again. I just keep my hand on Bozzetto. I just say... It, it feels good to have something familiar. Oddly. I don't understand. I don't understand. Selena. Make a, um... We probably should have actually... You, you, I'm gonna give you a bonus on this because you have been working in this general area. Um, but your score is not super high because this is not your, uh, because, I mean, whatever. I want you to make a, um, oh no, we'll do it like this. Make a work manual labor roll. You're not actually doing it. You're just kind of thinking it. I'm having you do this instead of repair because you have been working at a shipyard. So there's some degree of skill here. I'll spend, I got a, um, I got a 91, okay. but I would like to spend a force point. If force point and re-roll that. I think that makes a lot yeah. of sense for sure. Worse, I got 96. At least it's a 50 and it's not a fumble. Yeah. So you you kind of look at this and you're just like, you're just like, but this was I'm... not, you have, this is weird. You're not sure what's going on. In any event, um, we'll sort of wipe as the rest of you get to 
Um, th- you rush into the hangar bay. Ooh, the hangar bay. Uh, so as you guys get in there, uh, you look around. The droid attendant is still just there. Oh, Master Sadie Tell, how are things going with the sphere effect? Can we scan for, actually, we scan for life forms on the ship? Is there anything moving through vents right now? Anything moving through vents? Hmm. Oh. Um. Oh. Hmm. The droid kind of like pauses a couple of times, like, uh, oh, okay, uh, and we'll begin looking through, uh, scanning for life signs aboard the ship. While that's happening, I'm just, like, looking around to make sure, like, I don't see this thing, like, dropping out of... Go ahead so and make a, Everyone who's there, go ahead and make a look roll as you kind of glance about, you know. Ooh, a five. You do, do, like, a search your feelings for looking for him? Go ahead and do a search your feelings, yes. You're, you're, I got an extreme success. An extreme success. Abriel, you glance around, and with an extreme success? Mm-hmm. I also had extreme. Ooh. I also had, ex- no, I had, what do I have? I have a, yes, a negative seven. At, at, wait, oh, you that's doing- right. I rolled a one, and then the eight was the D10 topper. <sighs> he does have that. He wanted a thing like that. That's Jer- Jeremy did best you, I think, the other night. I think you rolled a minus fifteen. On oh, I never did roll. that. <laughs> I have to try again now. Where? What? You can't even do that in this one. That's a. That's it. The problem with this is it's a species thing, and like the this is a. I, I brought this over from Saga Edition. A negative eight. Narnapond. Seven. Negative seven. Negative seven. Oh, then never mind. Uh, oh, no, big yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah. Narnapond. Um, as you sort of just like reach out and it does make sense because you are so like sure that you you know how to sort of like look for these things honestly i'll say that abriel and train i'm going to honor the the extreme here um as you you kind of look over and you do see some like weird like slime on a grate nearby um like on a wall but you don't see any slime coming into the room could you both make psychology rolls for me um, Narna Pond, you can feel the presence of this person moving away from you. Do I have a general direction? Oh. General success. Success. Hard success. Hard success. Train, you think that that implies some kind of, like, some kind of, like, uh, squid-like thing, like, peeked in and saw that the, you know, that the hangar was being closed elsewhere, and then squelched away. Narnapond, reaching out with the force, you do feel that the creature is moving sort of along the path of that sort of wall that you guys were, that they are pointing to where they saw. So you think it is still in grates, moving away from you. You have a rough sense of where it's going. Um, You don't know the ship well, so you can always ask the droid, like, what is in some direction or whatever. But um, as kind of Bozzetto and Selina kind of are running into the room, the droid turns around and says, there are six life forms aboard. No, sorry, wait, Bozzetto, you're not a life form. There are five life forms aboard. Where's Where's the one farthest from our position right now? And which direction is it heading? Can you tell what species it is? Oh, our scanners are not that detailed or complex. Okay, where is it? Ah. Uh. <laughs> Bizzetto, you, you like, kind of just like looking at the screen, you see a lot of like, you see like windows being closed like very deliberately and like, it's just, it's, it's some real like, mm-hmm. It's almost the equivalent of the droid is now doing a Google search for how to find position within oh, ship I, I, of scanners. I'll just move. Yeah. I'll just move forward and just like push them out of the way and shove my scalp okay. thing. And so just... oh. burr, 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 burr. how rude! I'll point along the wall. Understood. In the direction he's going. Is there a way to isolate it? Can you close doors or or 
access ports or anything. Oh. Uh, there are some... pointing a direction. I can try to close stuff. There are yes. some blast doors and such, oh. but uh, it, it, it's not really that kind of ship. It's just kind of like a, you know, a thing. So, uh, Bezzetto, oh, okay. um, you can, why don't you make a computer thing just to see if you can I identify it the way Narna Pond is. Mm. Um, but uh, at this point, the droid is saying, oh, it's just, that's just general storage, escape pods, and other sort of uh, basic ship functions can, below decks. Can we lock down the escape pods too? Locked on escape pods. Oh, okay. That is yeah, locked down escape pods. Lock Don't down ask escape pods now. questions or question us. Eject the escape pods now. Eject all the escape pods. No, no. no. Either eject them all or lock them down. You can, lock them it, down. You don't. You cannot lock down escape. Like that's like the ships are not made unless they're like an imperial oh, ship. They're, they're, it's like it's an emergency thing. You can't. But you okay. could try to eject them all. Okay. So, Bozetta, what'd you roll for your first to use computers? Um, I spent six luck points for it to be a, um, a hard success. A hard success. So you do sense that the creature is kind of making its way, you know, like like down somewhere around here towards towards some escape pod base, yes. Papa! I don't even know what this thing is! Do we even care? Do we care? I say we leave the ship and blow it up. That's one way to do it. Unless you're going to want to examine that hard drive in Are there further weapons detail. on the ship? Like, if it were to take an escape pod, could we just... Uh, the music of the spheres is very modest weapons. The, the, the Count's Vigor has legit weapons on it. Yeah. I, 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 there are weapons on my ship. We can probably get it that way. Is there anything on this ship that we would need, Train? Do you know his, his office? Would he have information or uh, oh, not no. data pads? What is the Star Wars version of that? Data pads is correct. It's still oh, data yes. pads. Also, Bo I have you guys it. told, is Bozetto, is Bozetto sending out all the escape pods? Is that happening? Have you given that order? Uh, how, I mean, how, is, it, is he close enough that he might be able to get to them before they jettison or? Bezetta, with a hard success, you do suspect that this creature is is like is in the area of the escape pods. Well, then let's, not, let's not jettison them all. Let's let him jettison his own, and then we'll shoot it down. Why don't some of us go shoot him down while the other ones go get to find whatever information that they can? All right, then I'll get. I'll go on the ship with Bezetta. We can fly. The three of you can handle yourself, right? Yeah, and that and I much so. for computers. Yeah, but if he ends up if he ends up doing it like he ends up doing a fake out and stays on the ship, you're probably gonna be handier against him than I am. What? If there were information that he was keeping here, where would it be, Train? I'm I, not familiar with I, this place. I don't it the workroom, I don't know if he has any private quarters. I I only well, then shouldn't I, you come with me? You're the one who knows where it is. I, I can fly and I shoot. Um Three escape it's... pods jettison. Oh. oh. We, I need to get in the ship now. Yep. I'm going to go. Is the other one? Yeah. Is his oh. ship like a fighter? or a His ship is ship more is... like a fighter, yeah. Selena, can you fly that one? Yes. Um, I'll be, I'm already making my way towards the ship to get on board. Understood. So is going so the, to the, the ship. The Count's Vigor. The Count's Vigor. I, I will... Are there any schematics available of of where the workshop or whatever might be? None has been immediately apparent. I mean, and I should also say this is a person who was clearly very, very like private. So this is so not like a time. this is not like a super easy to use vet like Bazetto. It's 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 clearly laid out to like make make infiltration a difficult sort of thing. You know, you're you're sort okay. of just dealing with okay. that already. You know what, Train? We are not splitting up because as much as I hate to admit it, you and I are better together in situations like this and I do not want our children losing a parent. Well, then let's go. I'm already moving towards the ship. I'm starting the ship. But I will proceed on okay. as well. Are you getting in this one, Selena? No, I'll just follow everybody else. 
usually a good idea to, you know, not have to deal with countermeasures and things and vessels. There were some fun ones in there if you want. Ah, you're fine. Uh, so as you guys <laughs> get aboard the... I thought the... about it. Counts vigor. Okay. Um, let's we at least blow up the other ship on the way out. Uh, oh, you want to just blow his ship up on your way out? In, in the hangar, that would... Well, I mean, I guess if you don't care about this ship you're leaving, you could attempt that. Uh, firing in the hangar could be a bit dangerous even to your vessel, but you could attempt it. Uh, but basically, so you, so basically, Pizzetto, you unlock the hangar. Um, you guys are now lifting off, but you want to shoot at his ship on the, on the, on not the yet. Back in the hangar? Not yet. Okay. So you are now, you now. We scan for life ones in, the, in each of the three escape pods to see which one he might be in. Scan for life pods in the escape pods. You head out after the escape pods. They're going in like kind of like veering in three different directions. Bezetto, go ahead and make a um, go ahead and make a check for me. Okay. Use computers. Regular okay, success. Oh, use computers. Sorry. Yes. I wasn't sure if I was using my life farm scanner. It's basically the same. Um, it's a regular. Success. Regular success. You, you're you able to, like, pretty easily sweep one of them and know that there are no life signs aboard that escape pod. But because of their sort of widening gyre of where they're going, um, do you want to go to the uh, to kind of the middle one or the furthest one that was arcing away? Is it possible to, like, go in, like, if they're going out in, like, three different directions, can we, like, go in, like, up between the two and so that we're still, like, kind of going... It's the better his role for his used computers it is, the more the more pods you'll learn about in a single role. He got one success, so you learned about right, one. Right, 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 right. So but if I'm you try like, again, you can get... So, yeah, you can you can kind of do that to try to give yourself a thing, but... There would be a benefit to, like, kind of splitting the difference that way. Once yeah, I'll say that if you're going to try to scan two pods right now, if you're going to try to split the difference, go ahead. You'll need a hard success to get both of them. As you guys sort of move <laughs> away from the... We... We still need to neutralize that. And now there's like another escape pod going. Um, Extreme. And extreme. You scan both of those escape pods. There are no life forms on either. Then I'm going to turn around and start blowing the hangar on the ship. Uh, Well, you've left the ship a bit at this point. So you're turning around going. You're you're now aiming at the hangar in the ship. Understood. Uh... Go ahead and make a, uh, if you're trying, it's like a, it's like you're trying to like aim at like a pretty like specific little part of the vessel. Um, go ahead and make a, uh, let's see, this will be at first make a piloting roll for me for the freighter train. Um, and then make a weapon, uh, make a sh- vehicle weapons roll. I'm going to spend one luck to make that a success. Okay. And remember you have a penalty on everything because you're, uh, because oh, you're not yeah, doing great. Because you've been stabbed. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So still one luck to make that success. Okay. And then a vehicle weapons roll. Vehicle weapons. Hell yeah, baby. 25, that's a success. A success. So you managed to like blast into the shields. Your vehicle weapons are a thing. So it's a regular success? Yes. Okay, so that's... Uh, the ship is not being flown, so it'll take all of them. Oh, God, let me look at my shields rules. Hold on. Um, uh, that, I, I, it works like armor. I roll a shields roll. Perfect. Okay. What is its shield score for this? I don't have one. I'll just do a general vibe. Uh, I roll a 100 on its shields roll. So it has a fumble on the shield. So the shields like utterly fail as you sort of start blowing up uh, this area. So your your blaster, um, you penetrate the shields of your um, of, of of the music of the spheres, and you fill the hangar with um, with a bunch of like you know destructive energy as you kind of do a pretty decent job just kind of skirting past it. Uh, that droid in there is definitely dead now. It doesn't I don't care. Um, the, uh, the ship is kind of like, it's moving slightly. Um, at this point though, an automated cannon does rise out of it and just start generally shooting at the perceived threat to it. Um, so go ahead and make another, uh, make a, a vehicle, make a piloting roll. This is just your dodge basically. 
Is there a way for me to assist in any of this? Um, since you were operating the scanners, uh, mm. I think probably not. I think trains at the controls here. Selena? Could I help? In any, could I assist? Like, could I do the gunning or like piloting? I, I'm very good at both. Would so. I be able to coordinate? Coordinate assistance, yes. Tell you what, go ahead and make a coordinate roll. If you can get a hard or better, I will say that you can you can basically allow a handoff of some of these systems to other people. Nope. Okay. I got a ninety-seven, which is not a is not a is not a fumble because your score is super high. But so uh, Abriel basically is yelling, "Train, let her do," and let the like she's just yelling at you to let everybody else. But you're at the controls. You're trying it. So what is your role to dodge? And you have one penalty because you're you stabbed. <laughs> Oh boy, um, uh, that's a 98. 98. What is your piloting skill, though? 50. Okay, cool. So it's not a fumble. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you you try to sort of get out of the way of this. Um, I do, however, roll a three with the cannons of the ship, um, but it's only a 50. So that's only an extreme, not a vital. Um, so it hits you. Um, with basically a, like a like an like a kind of thing, uh, train. Could you actually roll a d100? Uh, you're doing an armor roll for your ship, um, and if you recall, uh, your ship does have pretty good shields and armor, but it's very bad speed. If you remember, I'm going to use a force point for that. Okay. It's not a fumble. It's like 85, but I, want, I I bet we can get better. I think you probably can. That's an eight. Eight. So Eight. you manage to, that would be uh, for this, that would be, so basically we'll say the, the vessel t between the shields and the stuff, the vessel takes no damage and just kind of, you know, is hit by that. Um, but you're definitely having to like deal with such things. Um, Bazzetto. Yes. Make one more scan for me. Unless you're giving up on that and you're just trying to take over for train. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's go ahead and reroll that. <laughs> hey, do another search your feelings for him. Go ahead. Regular success. Regular success. Um, Bizzetto, as upon this like detonation and the ship being blasted, um, not too many moments after that, you see a kind of like, oh, brother, just <laughs> a lot of escape pods are jettisoning. Like a lot, a lot. Narnapont. A regular success. Regular success. You try to reach out, but there's just so much chaos, and you're you're understandably so kind of like irritated by all this, um, that you are unable to uh, sense that being. Um, you also notice that the automated cannon is kind of confused. It actually does, like, fire towards a few of the escape pods, as well as kind of some errant shots away from you guys. But trained for the most part, you've kind of, like, managed to dodge the worst of it. Um, so there's now a, about, like, I think there were, like, 20 escape pods on there total. Three had come out. So there's, there's a lot of escape pods kind of flying around. Um, Narnapon has no idea of where they could be. What do you all want to do? Without, I'm going to pick a direction and start going into escape pods and start trying to destroy them one by one. Understood. So train's going this. Are you going to hand over any systems or or stuff for anyone here at this point? Or if no one comes up and suggests it, I'm not going to. But you, you might want to disable the big ship if you can. Yeah. If you and if you want to pilot your ship, I can shoot something if you prefer. So you're not doing two things at once. All right. Sounds fine. Yeah. You take over the guns. Okay. Since so I get the little pod thing, like in, in, in Falcon. <laughs> it's yeah, it doesn't quite have a. Uh, it's not as it's not as martially built, but there's definitely a little station you can go to for the sort of the to operate the guns. Thing. So you go ahead and make a vehicle weapons roll, uh, and what are you shooting at? The big one. That's what Narnapon said. You're firing upon the big vessel. Great. Go ahead and make yeah. a roll for that. The engines. Um, I got an eight. An eight? Which is nice. a extreme success? An extreme success. Yeah. Very good. So, um, 
these ship ones are one, so it's one, uh, what's it for? The ship is taking no, no offensive stuff, so I simply roll for its hull, yada, 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 figuring out how this game works, blah, 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 blah. Um, I roll an 85, so, uh, that is a failure on the hull, so you do just, like, <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> wait, can these come out? Yeah. What's that on? Oh, yeah. This LGI budget is off a chart. Yeah. So good. As it just floats among the wreckage of the Hosnian system and train make a uh, vehicle piloting role for me. Um. What'd you get? That's a failure. <laughs> You're hit by a piece of the thing that was blasted off. Make another D100 roll on behalf of your own uh, hull and shields. 44. 44. You, you, uh, it's not, a, this was just a, so it kind of graces, so all of you, like, f like, like, stumble a bit, you know, uh, kind of, those of you in seats already, whatever, Buzzetti, you're kind of plugged in, Abriel and Arnapod, it's probably a bit of a, whoa, you know, a, uh, uh, everyone goes the, whatever, That's um, funny. but you, you got heat, the kind of, the vessel continues, this ship does not seem to be going anywhere at this point. Um, but after after some of the escape pods, and you just start blasting escape pods. Um, yeah. make a luck roll for me, Train City Tell. I feel like I'm on uh, the Millennium Falcon, just like pushing buttons that don't actually do anything right now. Oh God! Yeah. Wait. <laughs> well, I'm an okay. engineer. I would have I would have failed anyway. I, if I if I have a penalty does that cancel out a bonus. Yeah. There, it's a one-to-one okay, one cancel. All right. I rolled twice and both of them are failures, so just, Understood. yeah. So you kind of, um, you go through, um, so that's, that's actually a real shame of one, but fun for me. Um, Bazetto, my friend. I also, mm -hmm. I, Narnapod, for the record, when you said, blow up the big ship in my head, I was like, oh my God, he should have still stayed on the big ship and just left with that. That would have been way smarter. Um, Bazetto. <laughs> Um, what was your last, uh, you had a normal success on your last scan? Um, I'm gonna say this is an easy enough thing. What's your used computer score, anyway, like your baseline? 95. Uh, yeah, then it'll, we'll say this is easy just as you're looking. Um, you do see kind of like, as you guys are just, um, way back here, one escape pod just kind of blinks out into hyperspace. I really hate those guys. Oh. Who are they? What are they? Yeah, what is that? Part of the Sorcerers of Tune. I don't what even do know what do? that is. They... Gotta go back and look at the notes. Unless, Philip, you have it. Uh, I can, I mean, yeah, if you, if you, if if you're just going to give them a general overview of the yeah. Sorcerers of Tuned, uh, Narnapond will explain to you um, how outside of the League of Wills, there are still some Force users. Um, they are considered enemies of the Alliance. Um, obviously, the, the League of Wills likes to have, doesn't really like to have unaligned, kind of untrained Force users. I don't know if you would glance at Selena or care about Selena while mentioning this, but um, you're sort of distinguishing this, that the Sorcerers of Tuned are a non-alliance order. They live in an area of space uh, called the Sliver of Freedom. Um, and they still practice slavery there. It's a very uh, kind of like lawless place. There's lots of warlords and despots. It's in sort of the extreme galactic northeast. Um, and uh, it's where, uh, like, there used to be an area called the Centrality. Um, there used to be uh, kind of like like the corporate sector even. It's, it's kind of just like all that weird stuff out there. Well, they sound lovely. Is that something that we need to be concerned with? If they're involved, then this just became a lot more challenging. But 
got as away. You, as you can see, with dealing with this one, you can't even trust what you see or what you hear with these ones. I'm just gonna say, Wait. as a general, a general. Yeah. What thing. do you? Yeah. Go ahead. What do you look like? Was he telling the truth about that? You can never believe anything they tell you. Can I make like a <laughs> psychology roll or something? You can it make doesn't... a psychology roll. Nardabon, go ahead and do a deception. He's, he's not good at those, don't worry. You're yeah. worried about the way a strange man looks? And while okay. our children are missing train, there are more important things right now. I, what am I doing? What are we doing right now? We're in a spaceship. It's not like we're in the middle of what do you want? Oh, yes. Yeah, so let's talk about everybody's appearance here. Starting with yours, Train. You've really let yourself go since we broke up. Did you really need me to help you maintain your self? Why are you being so superficial and why are you taking digs at me right now? You're you're the one concerned about the way that people really look. I'm not, if he's hiding his appearance from us, that's different than like than me being alone in space and trying He's to find helping us. somehow. I trust him because I happen to be with somebody that I trust for the first time in my life. And he is here on his I mean, It doesn't matter how he really looks. Oh. I mean, not to jump in here, but uh, they, they were right about me in a way. So I wouldn't be surprised if they were correct about Nana Pond. I don't but care just, how Narnapon looks. I don't care about Narnapon looks either, but I'm just saying. I was just curious and asking a question. Okay, what, fine. Where are we going? Where, Abriel, Abriel, where would you like to go right now? That's what we need to figure out, not how Narnapon actually looks. All right, well, you're so good at planning. Why don't you plan this out for us right now? We need more information, Train, that does not pertain to the way that this old man actually looks. Sounds great. Where do you plan we go get more information? I don't know. Can we sit down and talk about that? And I'm not sitting down that right now. Look? The, there was the... I didn't know that. I'm just, I'm just going to have taken control of the ship just so we don't crash into anything. <laughs> There's, and there are a lot of escape pods kind of just like tsh, like laying dormant now on whatever stuff. Um, tell you what, Bazetto, I want you to roll... Um, God, I... I want you to roll like a it's like it's a psychology, but it's like a ship psychology. Um let's just use computer, why not? That's it's close enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh just regular success. You do get a slight sense that like these most of the escape pods were just programmed like they weren't programmed to find nearest planet. They were just programmed to like like be in this area, like, clogging things up, probably so the one he was in he could control to get away more easily. So it is kind of, yes, you are right to take over uh, because there's a lot of just, like, you know, just wreckage to be like, kind of get it, get around in here or there. We, we could look into the other spheres on Caprioli. Caprioli? Are the spheres going to tell us anything? Do they have actual information or... Do we break them and see if we can track where their energy goes? Can we find this planet that's not a planet? I don't know. I don't Maybe even know where to boyfriend begin. has some connections that'll help us find that planet. You know what, Train? Maybe he does. Can I go to the comms? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's an excellent idea, Train. I know, I'm really smart. You can tell yourself that. That's fine. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> uh, yes, hello. Are you, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Um, this is the Baronet Elbrin Brunt. Oh, it's Abriel. I, Sorry, I, I know this is coming from a strange number. No, I, I, I figured. I, I, I see that it's the Count's Vigor, which I know is the, is the uh, ship of your ex-husband, which is a... Yes, I'm, I'm here. What, what can I, what do you need? I've told no one of the situation, but I have many, many things on standby ready to go. Thank you. Um, so I'll just let him know all the information about, like, the the planet that's not a planet, the thing that escaped. Would it be possible for one uh, to get some kind of, I don't know. Ah, 
I don't even know what to ask for. God damn. Can I do like a insight? I don't. Uh, Hold on. I mean, if, on, let me think about this. Yeah, sure. I mean, well, while you think about that, if you just tell him about about a planet, uh, the, you tell him what you know about the planet of Exo. He has not heard of it. Uh, you tell him about these. Do you tell him about these sorcerers of Tuned? Uh, yeah, yeah. no, I won't tell him okay. about that. Gotcha. But I will tell him about the the squid thing. Um, a. A, a squid. You were fighting with a squid. I, I don't quite follow it's, this part. It's a long story. He. It was some um, kind I, of. A... I. I know some of the greatest xenobiologists. Uh, I. I can. I can connect you with xenobiologists if that's what. No, you I. I don't think that's necessary. But what we need to focus on is is that planet. That's where Understood. the kids are. I can. I can ask some of our uh, of the cartography guild. I can. I can go and ask uh, who knows of this planet. Uh, um, yes, and maybe maybe somebody who would know about spatial anom uh, anomalies or something like that. I don't even know where to start. Understood. Do you want me to? Should I? Should I? I mean, is Narnapond there? His yes. connections are, are going to be, of course, as good as mine. But I can certainly go straight. To, I, I'm I'm boots on the ground here. I can I can go wherever you need. Um, I'll I'll ca call Narnapond over. But, but Narnapond, should we should we be should we be calling in the the royal guardians at this point? Um, should we, we be? Can, we can reach out to them. Okay. See if do, they've encountered. Do you want to do that, or should I? World? I can do it. Okay. Of course. Yes. Of course. Um, well, yes. I will. I will look into this planet. I will. I will contact the the Royal Cartography Guild, uh, and he'll go do that. Thank you. Everything's going to be okay. Then he hangs up. Okay, we've got eyes out. We've got information pending, so. Narnapon, what should we do? I still think we should go to the other planet. Okay. And I'll call the Royal Guards on the way. All right, so as you as you guys set a course for Capriaro. Not go ahead and make a. Yeah, go ahead and make one. A navigation check? Yeah, because you're good at them, and why not? Why not throw them in? I'll also offer to train, since he's hurt, if he would rather me, like, help pilot the ship with Bozzetto so that he can get some rest. Do you Wait. want us to fly this ship for you? Yeah, do you want us to do it for you because you're hurt? Get some rest? I, I could take cool. a look at that wound for you. Yeah. I just rolled three 29s. That's eerie. Uh, well, a 29, I assume, is a hard success it's a hard hard success yeah cool um well that's good uh so as you um uh chart basically your you you can you can kind of skip right past um the uh you can sort of skip having to go right back to Alsek and you can kind of take a quicker thing because Capria is very close to Alsek um so you manage to get to that system as you guys are traveling uh Nardapond, are you trying to help drain with his wound yeah, I can yeah. if he wants me to. Yeah, so, yeah. There certainly is a med kit on the thing, so you can go ahead and roll a, a medicine uh, a medicine uh, roll if you'd like. And and I will say, train, you should get some rest. Extreme. Extreme. Um. Great. Uh, that means uh, da -da 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 -da, healing medicine. Um, yes. You are back to normal. You cannot go up if you have any. You don't even have resilient, do you? Nope. So yeah, you're back to normal in that case. Very well done. Uh, uh, thanks, Nardapon. Um And and then uh, when Ariel said that's rest, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I don't need to rest. You can pretend to be brave later, Train. You need to be on your A game. Take a rest. And I'll say that not not in a like an ex-wife way, in a more like commanding officer way. Understood. Um, not there's no emotion in it, just like pure. <laughs> this is what you need to do. You are resting now, um, Narnapont. As you're kind of have seen to train, uh, I guess. So Selena, you are at the controls now. Um, if train lets me, I will do it. I don't want to just yeah. pilot someone else's ship so without. You're at the controls, um, Selena. This ship is. Um, like it handles well 
it's got real it's got like real like divorced guy energy like it's a it's the kind it's a it's a ship that way fewer women are going to be impressed by than you think would be like Reeks it's of cologne it's yeah oh, it's like yeah. it's like it's like it's like it's very like it's it's a aggr it's aggressively masculine it's like oh, yeah you get it's like it's like I so feel, much dark feel, wood so much leather i can feel back at my power and my energy okay yeah and it's like it's like the, the fact that it's named accounts vigor oh you wouldn't know this selena oh i'll tell you what selena let's say let's say that train kept the little like plaque thing up there by the the thing just so you uh you you read as you're flying that this ship is apparently named in honor of an alsakani count from from kind of like from lore who um who died after being with several courtesans for like numerous days so he had so much vigor he was he did this for several days and then like died in this like glorious you know kind of in such a Wait, glorious you way. have that inscribed on the plaque in the cockpit it came like that it came, it came like, like that, that but he didn't remove it, came, it is my it point came who am, I, who am like I to remove a piece of history and i do want to point out and i'm talking about dan not train is that i sent dan so many ships he could choose and what their backstories were and he didn't look at what their stats were at all he just <laughs> went to the one i knew he was going to pick and it was this one it fits the character okay it really does so anyway selena as you read about this this unnamed <laughs> alsakani duke who had a lot of vigor and then died so did he really have vigor i don't know the i point, don't think so the point being um Narnapond, you're going to make a, uh, um, you're going to make a contact with the Royal Guardians. Uh, who are you, are you reaching out to, like, the Royal Guardians whom the, the Vicountess would, um, like, are you just reaching out to, like, uh, like, like, the Countess Pasadora Westier's people? Are you going to, like, the actual, like, like, official Royal Guardians for real business? You're just kind of going no. to her household guards? You want to avoid those ones. Understood. Not, your because, like, I mean, like, if you want to get the one who's the best, you'd reach out to probably like, yeah, okay, no, gotcha. understand. I don't want, I don't want that one. I don't want, do not give me the best. <laughs> All right, uh, roll me a D200. Because right. I, I did not mock up her people already. Weird of me. Um, a one? A one? Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow, I mean, I know any numbers of a one. Uh, 0.5 percent, but geez. All right, well then, an Abednado it will be. Um, roll me a d20. 20. 20. All right. Um, Jeez. you have uh, you've got some real extremes there in your rolls. Just going. Um, I mean, there are like middle di middle numbers. Yeah, there are middle numbers. Uh, <laughs> That's so the way you, I do it. Uh, you contact a uh, an Abednado. Name of W L. W. I'm gonna call that uh, Walrus. <laughs> Woolwin. We'll call it Wallow. Wallow. I think that's a fun one. Uh, so you contact uh, the uh, the Royal Guardian Wallow. Um, the Star Wars one. Do I have it on this sheet? Hold on. Uh. Oof. We'll, uh, okay, gotcha. So you contact uh, Wallow. Uh, Wallow uses a Z Zier pronouns, um, and is uh, is a is a uh, you know the Vicaldus Pasadora is not the most influential person on all sake, and of course, so Wallow is not the uh, greatest royal guardian there is. Um, but Wallow certainly is, is, Wallow's very good at doing what, what sort of, uh, Z sort of, like, like, try to do. Just, like, keep, keep the peace there around the Vicountess. Um, but you can, you can sort of, you can contact Zir and see what. What, see what, what was the name of the planet? Oh, again? Uh, uh the, going to Caprio Rill. The one that the guy said was Exo? Oh, the planet was called Exo. Yes. Got it. 
So you reach out to Wallo will kind of appear kind of a, a hollow, this uh, this sort of like Abednado, which if anyone has, just Google that. Uh, yeah. uh, they're, they're, I think they originated in some of these new movies. They kind of have these like yeah. wider one of the, faces with, uh, yeah. They're one um, of the like pilots in Force Awakens. Yes, one of, yeah, one of like the pilots sitting around in Force Awakens. The only things. alien pilot in the it, final battle of the, Yeah, I think so. Force Awakens. Yeah. Uh, so Narnapont. Uh, Wallow, it's it's Narnapont. Have an urgent, urgent request for you. Oh, of course, yes. Whatever, whatever, whatever can I do for you? Have, have you ever come across a, a world or a planet or mention of a place called Exo? Hmm. Okay. I want you to roll for Wallow. I want you to roll a lore. Uh, Wallow being uh, uh, Z will uh, as a royal guardian ha yeah, uh, Wallow would have probably a 77 in lore. So just roll a d100 for me. 100. There are other numbers. Kevin. How can I make this so how can I make this Okay, okay, let me think for a moment. Stress. Wallow will say. Well, I think for me the most important thing is keeping it I, clandestine. I, I have heard of such a planet. That's the most important thing to you? Chef's guess, great. I have heard of such a planet, yes. What... Master Nonapond, what what is going on? Is the Vicountess uh, in trouble? No, the Vicountess should be okay, but we have some missing kids we are looking for. Oh dear. Very well. I know exactly what to do. Um, I will contact the League of the Wills at once. There's... Shh, shut Wait. Up. Uh. That's the fumble part. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Did he tell us where it is? No. I'll try to ping him again. Uh, no reply. Oh, God. These very, very dedicated types, uh, sometimes they're, you know, are just like really going after something, so... So Z's, uh, Wallow is, Wallow, you, you've set Wallow on a, t like, Wallow's going to, like, Wallow's going exactly to the people you did not want Wallow to go to. All right. Um, can I also ping the Baronet? Sure. This is the Baronet, Elbrand Brunt. Hey, Narnapon. Narnapon. Oh, how are things? How is Abriel? How is everyone? How is Train? Is Train okay? I'm sure he's devastated. What a, what a silly question. I'm worried about him. It's it's very big of you to care so much about I, him. I really do. I, I I I mean, I don't want I don't want anything bad to happen to him. And now, one of the worst things that a person could experience, his children are missing. I can't even. Oh gosh. I, but uh, you've just been such a rock for those children too, so I, I, I imagine I mean, you're I, hurting I'm, as well. I am putting my feelings. Uh, that is, there is no time for me to be worried about that. I just need to do whatever I can to help. Um, I, uh, w what can I do for you, Narnapont? Oh, uh, we have a derelict ship, which was the uh, of the Sparefax. If you can send a crew to go check it out and see what you can learn. Oh, okay, sure. Um, of the of the of the Vicountess's uh, Royal Guardians. Uh, maybe some of the science, or of our science hmm. officers. I have some connections, actually, very well. Yeah, I'll, uh, so, uh, so, so Elbrand will sort of sign off of that. Um. Uh, the sphere is great. Perfect. Uh, so, as you guys go through hyperspace, uh, we will wipe to, um, ooh. Hmm. Actually, uh, Selena, would you please roll me a luck roll? A luck roll? Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, that's a failure. I got a 72. Can I spend a force point? You can if you want to. This is, I, I, uh, before you do, I'll, I'll explain what's going on. Um, if you're lucky, I'll show you a seed not involving you guys. Otherwise, we're just going to cut to you. Oh, yeah. No, I got 72. That's fine. 72. <laughs> you arrive. So you don't know what your old friend with the auburn hair is up to. No problem. So in any case, <gasps> as you guys tr- arrive in the Capriorel system, uh, Selena, as you sort of look out, uh, you remember this planet. You remember this planet at different points. You remember being a come-up flector for a swoop gang? Whatever that means. You remember being here. And in fact, as you sort of pass over this this planet, kind of heading down, a train, I think, can tell you where this sort of specific buyer in question was, uh, which sort of area. It's a um, kind of, think of like, uh, I don't know, think of like, like like Tuscany, you know, it's like it's like not a super densely populated area, but it's definitely close to some. So it's kind of like vineyards and sort of fancier areas. It's not really where you were at all, Selena, that you you are taking this vessel, uh, though you do see in the distance uh, kind of terrain similar to that, like blighted sort of dark rock that you were on. Um, Am I in like the the cockpit with just Bizzetto? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a sort of a, a, it's a it's a wider kind of thing, but yeah, it's mainly just the two of you. Yes. They're all back there at comm stations or or whatever. Okay. I would have, uh, at some point during the flight, if that's okay, I probably would have. Of course. Just said to Bizzetto, I would have, like, looked over Bizzetto at one point and just quietly said to Bizzetto, I don't know why I know you, but I do sounds kind of crazy to talk to a droid about this who I can't understand back but I didn't realize how important familiarity would feel to me right now and I I will mention that uh, while you're aboard the ship you can send like like text on a like if you want to send her a text you can, it will be translated because, like, you know, like, like in the movies, there, he, you know, like the the X week will be like, no, oh no, what do you talking? like? They they read it when they're yeah. plugged in, yeah. So then you would see something like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try something, and you tell me if this is familiar. All right. And I'm gonna play the only recording I have from that place, Philip. Do you play? So, um, Selena, your blood turns cold. Um, is it that it's that recording that you played long ago? Yeah. So basically, out of like a, a projector eye, um, you see that sort of like young sort of farm boy who now is acting. He, you know, like based on the intel you had on him before you saw him in this recording, he, he definitely grew up. He's wearing all black and he's speaking with this like, odd kind of, like, somberness as he talks to Jabba the Hutt, offering a gift of two droids, requesting the Jabba treat with him for the release of his friend. You watch this. You watch this recording being played a long time ago in a galaxy that you're still in. So, were you there? Because it doesn't make sense to me. I was. I carking knew it. How the cark did that happen? (laughs) How the cark are you here? Criffing, explain this to me. I... Vench, my skug! Kark! I can't believe I can say I haven't been able to talk to anybody about this. I don't really know. I genuinely don't know. I Something happened, something went wrong, and I landed here on this planet that we're flying over right now. And I don't know how it happened. And I... 
not the right time. Is this part of that Criffin 4 stuff that Master Luke is always talking about? When he says that name, even though he's playing the, the, um, he's playing this recording, Selena. There is this, like, flash of anger, and you know that you were given one last command. You can hear your master's voice once again, and now that it's so in the open, and now that it's not flashes, now that you know the moment you were seeing this echo in the forces, this object was nearby, just triggering it for you, you hear, You will kill Luke Skywalker! Echoing in your mind, you remember the dreams, you remember the agony of those days when you felt him die over a sanctuary moon half a galaxy away. It's good to feel something familiar until it cuts. In any case, you enter the atmosphere of Capri Roll. And that's where we're ending tonight's session. <laughs> good. I was getting a little teary eyed. Oh, <laughs> shit. Hmm. What's that about? That's weird. That's actually really good. You. You did that because I was going to do one more thing, Philip, and I'm really glad that uh, you cut me off. We'll keep that for another time. Understood. <laughs> sorry about the, uh, sorry about cutting it off. Uh, no, it's very, it was, it was perfect. It was perfect. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, well, I wonder what that means. Um, I don't know. Go Maybe Google Selena Marnus if you got any questions. Okay. Anyway, um, so uh, with that, um, we come to the end of tonight's session. Um, if you uh, if you enjoy what we do here, please uh, follow our channel. Uh, subscribe if you're able. Go to our about page to see all of the amazing things that our uh, players do. Um, they got links to all their socials and the like. Follow our socials. That's uh, at Long Lost Lore RPG on Instagram. At Long Lost Lore on TikTok. Um, we have a Discord. Our Discord's cool. We post recaps. We do stuff there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also, uh, we have other shows such as Murder by Murder tomorrow. Our Agatha Christie murder mystery. I'm giving it a 30% chance it ends tomorrow. 30% chance they they almost have all the information. They don't. It won't end tomorrow. Thir but on the off 30%, I'll give it. Um, on Friday, we're going back to Voluptua, baby. The love dice system. It was preposterous. There was, like, <laughs> like there's no nudity on the stream, but there was a lot of nudity in-game. Uh, there were three sexy montages and one actual Skinamax sex scene occurred. Um, yes. And player death. So it's a, it's, a, it's a lethal place, but boy, do they look good dying. Um, so yeah, please join us for that. As we, we play with a love dice system where they're literally rolling four play dice. Um, rolling a 13, oh, I, Dan, here's some information for you. Rolling a 13 happens uh, because it's the 13th option when you roll kiss buns. If you roll kiss buns, that's a 13, hits the dread clock. Um, on Saturday, we have a uh, long lost. That doesn't sound dreadful to me, though. Well, it's just, it's what it is. Uh, on Saturday, we have uh, another wonderful session of uh, Long Lost Loves with Liv and Lauren as they talk about all of their favorite nostalgic things. We talked about, uh, they had me on as a guest this past week, we talked about Labyrinth. Uh, this coming week, I wonder why, why that was appropriate that weekend. Uh, this coming week, you're talking about... Pe uh, go, go, Power Rangers! I, you know, we're going to talk about it. We're not going to sing about it, so join us. It. Either way. Uh, and then on Sunday... If you liked our Star Wars stuff for for it for more Star Wars fun with a slightly different vibe, check out Ah, a more wretched hive, uh, in which we the stakes are far lower and far less intense things happen. We can And there's make, no time we can add some missing kids to it if you want. Like we can find a way to get some kids. Oh, missing. there I mean Murdenki oh. definitely has missing kids. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Last night I made Pierce laugh so hard. When, when I mean, Jeremy was doing amazing. When Jeremy's character, Murdenki, was sad because of his position in life. He's a he's a cantina jizz musician. He's on the ground, and he's just crying. And he looks up at my character and says, like, uh, it's my friend. But you're my friend, right? And I said, I'm absolutely not your friend. 
absolutely we're not friends and it was it, yeah. pierce really liked that the other the other great note of the night to me was um aaron who is playing a paladuvian which is aura sings species <laughs> is expressing how she never orders her own drink she just drinks everyone else's drinks by sticking her fingers in the glasses because they can <laughs> suck blood through their fingers so she just drinks people alcohol by putting her fingers <laughs> It was. <laughs> oh, it was great. Um, that was wonderful. It was a great session. So yeah, check that out. Uh, we got a we got a we got a dog in frame. Also, I know people like that. So yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yes. But it's, I can't show his. He can't. He won't turn around to show his face. He's shy. There you go. Oh, there you go. That's good. Yeah, That's we got the profile. profile. Not um, enough. He just wants to lick my face. <laughs> uh, well, save that for Voluptua. Uh, okay. So um, on that note. Uh, Everyone, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back next week with more of this wonderful uh, Star Wars uh, craziness. Oh, do you yeah. want to talk about the other star thing or no? Oh, Not yeah. Yet. We'll mention that, too. Um, uh, what is the exact date, though, in September? What is the What are the dates of the Second. days? Second is right. the Friday. On. Yeah. Uh, so we are We are basically, we, we did our Star Trek. We loved our Star Trek. Our Star Trek will go on forever. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing on the first weekend of every month, we're going to be doing a Star Trek, sort of like their one shots, but they'll be continuing the voyages of the noteworthy. Um, so we'll it's be doing- It's episodic. It's episodic, but it's only once a month. So it's kind of like a comic book. Uh, so our, um, our next, kind of our next episode of that will be on, uh, I think, we're going to tr maybe try doing a thing where, like, we just, like, take one Friday, the first Friday off every month. Uh, we take off of Blood from Stone and do it there. So, yeah, this next, uh, on the second, uh, we'll be doing our next Star Trek one shot. It's going to be really fun. Uh, I've already got an idea for it. Uh, that That's the hand symbol indeed. Um, you're, you're, uh, use the force, Harry, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, um, so that was great. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Thanks, a big thanks to our players. Uh, that was a really fun, uh, fun one, and uh, I appreciate everyone. Until next time, the Force will be with you, always. Mm -hmm.